I'm out here with Tim Duclos, who's an ecologist with Audubon, Vermont. We're here at the Catamount Community Forest where all of this forest management work is happening. One of the things that's really neat about the Catamount Community Forest, in addition to all this amazing habitat that it provides for a wide range of different critters, is that it's all birding hotspot and there's a super active birding community here. And I've actually gotten personally really interested in and excited about birding and become one of Vermont's Audubon endorsed foresters recently, yes, yeah. which I was really, really excited yeah. about. So we've been working very closely with Audubon Vermont, folks like Tim, uh, to make sure that this habitat is really, really bird friendly. So we've just been walking around this project mm -hmm. and looking at how it's turning out. What do you think? I think it looks great. I love forests. I love trees. I love birds. Yeah. As I know you do as well. Absolutely. Um, we're out here in this area that if you're not used to forest management, you know, and you, and you're not like a forester mm -hmm. or an ecologist or a wildlife biologist, you're going to come out here and this is going to be like incomprehensible. Yeah. It is going to really challenge your ability to understand how this mm -hmm. could possibly be something positive mm -hmm. for birds, for forests, yep. for our ecology for our climate. Yep. It's, I really think of it as a um, kind of a, a chapter of restoration of our forest. And through management, we're trying to restore these forests to the complexity that existed before that benefits all of these species. These are the conditions to which our native species evolved for thousands of years, yep. right? And we have these forests across our landscape, which are really young, which don't have different canopy layers, different sizes and ages of trees. They don't have canopy gaps. They don't have big trees. They don't have dead wood on the ground. And all of those things are habitats mm -hmm. for birds and all this other stuff. We're finally realizing how we can create habitat for them today. Yeah. When I first uh, marked some, some timber, some trees myself, I. I would stare at a tree for like minutes and be like, is that the right tree to cut? Me too. Me too. Yeah. Do I, or, or do I leave that tree? Is that a better one? You know, and it, it just felt so heavy to make that kind of decision. Yeah. I had the same exact experience. So I was like, every tree that I marked was like a dagger to my heart, <laughs> you yeah. know? And yeah. it's like, it was really, really hard. But then when you start to understand forest ecology, you understand that they're, they're about death mm -hmm. as much as about life. They understand mm -hmm. mortality. Yeah. This community, this forest community, the trees and all the species that live here have evolved in a dynamic world. And actually, if you or I, a bunch of ecologists, a bunch of biologists, a bunch of foresters were to go out to an old growth forest, the parts of it that we would be celebrating mm -hmm. and the most excited about would be dead wood on the ground, yeah. dead standing trees, the multi-generational forest that just came from centuries of natural disturbances and the ensuing regeneration. Like death is a celebration it's, in yeah. these ecosystems. Yeah. A forest ecosystem, everything is, is in, a, in a cycle, right? Yeah. And so with, with death, um, you find new beginning and, you know, one thing feeds off another and it, it just, you know, builds and builds. I think a lot about the fact that those organisms, the species that live here in forests that are extremely altered, that maybe lack dead wood on the ground, that they, which is a condition that they've adapted to for millennia, mm -hmm. they don't care if I cut that tree down or if that tree fell over. Yeah. All that they care about is that it, it's there now. And suddenly they have habitat which has been absent for a really long time.